Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This is part two in the TW file command. In this one, we're going to send multiple uploads. We'll send the TW file command once, and then we're going to send a header with five bytes, and then another header with five bytes, and then in the case of 15, we'll send a third header with five bytes of data. We're going to start in the next one. I'm not going to make any changes in the next one other than the fact that I'm going to make this T0, this T1, and this N0, I'm going to set them all to global. And then this way, when we send the command to refresh the page or we call page zero again, it will maintain the contents of these three fields and we won't have to re-hit the file browser or we won't see these change. Now we'll go over to the Arduino. Now in part one, we went over the basics of the TW file command and we sent a single upload to it. So we used the TW file command and then the header had the same values in it. I'm going to pick up from where I left off on that. If you want to see it, it'll be video number 184. Now for this video, we're only going to send five bytes at a time. And we have it set up to where we can send five, 10, or 15. So we're going to go over to the input tab. And in this area right here, this is where we send the five bytes and we send it the number of times that we want based upon the button we pushed on the next one. So I'm going to comment out a couple lines. So now what we've done is we've eliminated this for loop and we're just sending the five characters. So essentially we've eliminated the functionality of sending more than five bytes at a time. And up here where we define the number of bytes that we're going to send, we were using that send times or the value that we get back from the next one. And in this case, we're going to eliminate that and just send five. Now I've made this more complicated than it has to be because we're going to set the header byte number 10. We're going to set that to five. And then by shifting the five over eight bits, we're dropping it off. So we're making it zero. So we're going to make 10 equal to five and we're going to make 11 equal to zero. And then another change we're going to make just for clarity is down here when we send the TW file command. I'm going to comment out this line 47. And then I'm going to add this line where we're going to print out the serial monitor. We're going to print that TW file command. I don't have to worry about the end characters on this because this is just for our reference. And it'll show the number of characters that we're going to send. And I want to leave that send times times five in there because I want the total number that we're going to send. Even though in the header file up above, we're only going to send five characters at a time. I want to know the total number that we will be trying to send to the next gen display. And also notice on the serial two, we use print and on serial, we use print line. That's one because when we're sending values to the next gen display, we don't want to have that um, carriage return in the line feed at the end of it. And the reason I'm pointing that out now is I made an error in the last video, and we'll clean that up a little bit later. I'm going to make one more change, too, up here where we print out the header. If you'll notice, we're printing the header to the serial monitor, and we're writing it to the next one display. But we don't do the print line even when we're sending it to the serial, to the serial monitor, and that's because we're sending it one byte at a time, and we don't want to have it one after another. But what happens is when we go to print something after that, it's on the same line and it's just not clear. So after I'm done sending the data to the header or displaying the header, we're going to add one line that just says serial print line. And so that'll inject a, a carriage return and a line feed, and that way everything will be on its own line. You wouldn't really need this for your own testing, but for the video, I think it'll make things a little more clear. I'm going to upload this and I'll show it to you in the serial monitor. I have it uploaded, and you can see the output in the serial monitor there. You can see that 1 colon 0, which means I pressed the 1 button and got the 0, 1 as my value. The TW file command is sending a total string of 5 bytes. We get the FE, which says that the file was created and we're ready for the data. And then we send the header with the data, and you can see the 5 bytes in the header. And then you can see the message that says that it received it correctly. So you'll see what happens when I press that 1 a second time. 
You see, we don't get anything. It just kind of, it just fails, but we don't get an error message. Then if I send it a, second, a third time, it works just fine. And that's because of an error made in the Arduino code. I'm going to fix that before we go on. And that occurs down here where I try to refresh the page by calling page zero again. If you look, I have the serial two dot print line instead of print. So it interjects that carriage return and line feed, but it's after the end character. So it looks as if it's added to the beginning of the next time I send something. And so it doesn't recognize it. So we're going to get rid of that, and now that should clean that up going forward, because that was going to happen throughout the video, and I just wanted to clear it up and point out the fact how that that print line can affect the next gen display. And you can see the first time I pressed it, since I didn't make any changes, it still had that in the buffer. But now we should be able to press one over and over. And you can see that it works as we would expect it to work. But now when I press button two, you can see that we print the TW file command, but we have 10 instead of five because we're wanting to send five characters twice, which is a total of 10. But now we're only sending five at a time. So we send that first header and we send the five bytes. But the next one is saying I need 10 more. I need 10 bytes, so I need five more. So it's in a state where if I press the button again, You can see that I can press any button and it's locked. And that's because the connection is in a state where it's only going to receive data a certain way. It, it's not going to be affected by commands or anything. And it has to be any data it receives. It has to be preceded by that header string. So we have to figure out what the connection or how to know when the connection is ready for the next five bytes. And what we can do if it gets into this state, can we throw in some error correction so that it leaves the state if we do something accidental. Or let's say it misses a byte or something. And we're going to start over here in the main tab. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a reset header. And if you look, it's the same first seven characters, just like the one above it. And then that second, that first zero, zero is for error correction, which we're not going to get into in this video. And then the next one is the packet number. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But for right now, for the reset header, those are just set to FF and FF. And then you leave the, the length to zero. And when you send that to the next gen, it will reset the next gen. The other two variables we're going to have, we're going to have a packet number, and then we're going to have this TW file dog. And I use things called watchdog timers. So whenever I use a timer or a setting for a specific purpose, I just put the word dog at the end of it. So we're going to have this TW file, TW file dog variable, and we're going to set both of them set to zero to start with. Now we're going to go over to the input tab. And somewhere in the sequence, after we send that header file, and maybe before we send the first five packets or the first five bytes, we need to increment that packet file or that packet number variable. We're just going to stick it in here. So what will happen is after we send those first five or right before we send those first five bytes, we're going to increment that packet num. It should be set at zero at this point, so it'll go to one. And now we're going to go over to the delay tab. This delay tab is going to run every second. And what we'll do is if that packet number is greater than zero, we're going to increment that T file dog. And then based upon the number that we have in that T file dog, we can set the delay time for when we want to act upon and reset the next gen display. And for this test, we're going to set it at five seconds. So if, if five seconds has passed and we haven't reset that TW file dog variable, we're going to reset the display. And the first thing we'll do is we'll just print a message out of the serial monitor that says we need to reset the display because there's been a timeout. And this is where we're going to use that header file. And I've let, put a note in here and I've duplicated it from the main page. And then we just have to send it in this header file. We don't have to make any changes to it or set it up. So we're just going to use that H variable. We're going to count through 12 bytes, and we're going to send them one at a time up. And then we'll finish it with this serial print line at the end, 
just to make sure that it's clean and looks good. And then finally, we'll reset the TW file dog and the packet num back to zero. So the way this will work is if the packet number gets above zero and five seconds has expired, then we're going to reset the header and set everything back to zero. I'm going to upload this and show you how it works. So now when I press the one key, you can see it works like it's supposed to, but we've incremented, incremented that packet. So we're still going to get that need to reset the display. But if I press the two, press it again, then we get that and I can't press any other key. But once that we get the timeout, now I should be able to press the one again. If I press the three, let me clear it. I press the three. The nice part, oh, I got an error. If I press the three, you can see that it's asking for 15 bytes of data, but we're only sending five. We get the timeout. I press it again and hit. It locks it up. And now I can press it. So now we have a way that to autocorrect if we do get into an error state. So what happens is we send that first five bytes, and then we need to get some indication back from the next one that it's ready for more bytes. The message that we get back from the next one that indicates it's ready for another packet is 05, or hex 5, which is the same as decimal 5. But in this case, you don't get the end characters. You don't get the 0 FFs. So we're just going to be looking for a single character. So we're going to look for a DFD length of 1, and we're going to look for a byte value of 0, 05. And if it does, then we're ready to send another packet of data. And so we're going to send a little message that says um, 0, 05 was received. We're going to send the packet, and we're going to include the packet number. It will have incremented, so that means we're ready for packet 1 after the first one sent. And then we'll have to increment the packet in this function also. And then we have to set up the header. And just like in the one below, where we set the byte 10 to 5 and byte 11 to 0, duplicate that in this. But the difference for this one is, is header byte 8. And you can see it up here. 8 and 9 are the packet number. And what the least significant bit will be on 8, and the most significant will be on 9. So technically, if we get into a lot of variables or a lot of packets above 255 to need the most significant, or byte 9, then you'd have to do some sort of math like we do up here for header 10 and 11. But for right now, we're just going to assign the packet number to header byte number 8. And then you need to send it. And just like below, we're going to count to 12. We're going to send each byte individually. We're going to serial write them out the serial monitor, and we're going to send them up to the next one. And then we're going to end that with that serial print line just to keep everything on its own line. And then we're going to write the five bytes again up to the next one. But then header byte number eight. We, we changed it, we set it to the packet number. We're gonna set that to zero, just in case it's our last packet of data that we're sending, it'll be ready to send the first packet the next time we use the header file. So the packet number itself will have to be incremented. We'll reset that later if we need to, but if there's another packet, it'll be incremented, and, and then we'll set the DFD equal to zero again, or empty it out so that we're looking for that zero five, or whatever, whatever the next one sends, we'll be ready to grab it. And then the other thing we're going to do is when the header or when the everything is done, we're going to want to clear that um, TW file dog variable and the packet number variable. And we'll do that after we receive that FD command, which says everything is complete. So we'll do that down here. So once we receive that 0FD from the next one, we know that the file has been received correctly. We'll reset that. And that way that... Uh, won't execute where we reset the next one. So we should be good now. I'm going to upload this and show you the final product. You start by pressing 1. Yeah, we got an error. I don't know if that happens because we're sending other data when I'm uploading. But now we're good. So we got that first byte, and you can see that we're the TW file has 5, and our header has 5. 
and it worked correctly. So now we'll go ahead and send to. And you can see the TW file command. Let me move it up. You can see that the TW file command has 10, and then we send it twice. And you can see that the packet or the packet number incremented to 1. And now we'll hit the 3. And you can see that with the TW file sent 15 characters that time. We went 5, 5, and 5, and then we went 0, 1, and 2. And then we received everything correctly. And we can go between them all. There's the 10. Go back to the 1. And go back to the 3. And we'll go back to the Arduino. Essentially what you're doing is you're sending the TW file command with the total size of bytes that you want to send, and then you're sending each header, and you can send any different combination. You could send three bytes in one and five bytes in another, just so that the total, the last one you send, makes it equal to 15, 10, or 5. In the next video, I'm going to make the bytes much larger. We're going to send five to 10,000 bytes of data and I'll show you how that works, and then we'll divide it up into different sizes of packets that we want to send. And I'll also send variable lengths, so we will have to figure out how to handle a packet that isn't the exact size. Like, let's say we decide to send 1,000 bytes at a time, and we've got 9,500 bytes to send. Well, we'll send nine sets of 1,000, but then we'll have to send 500 or let's say it's 337 or something like that, we'll have to figure out how to send those last 337. And then that'll be the third video. And then in the fourth video, I might try to come up with a practical example. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.